good afternoon everyone welcome to this webinar on control systems in the real world i'm sanjay and i'm your instructor today for this webinar i'm a control systems engineer i design develop prototype and deploy control system products for automotive applications my day to day work revolves around understanding complex control systems and undertaking feasibility studies performing experiments modeling and simulating plant and controller systems selecting components such as actuators and sensors calibrating and testing systems to achieve performance and stability and uh, preparing demonstrations for proof of concept of new idea so let us start let me briefly walk you through the topics of the webinar and the sequence in which we will be discussing these topics today we will start with a basic introduction about control systems and why one should study them some obvious and some non obvious control system examples from the real world then we will discuss state of art of control system applications in the automotive field i will then take you through fundamental topics that every control system engineer should learn about to be successful in his or her career later we will also discuss the evolution of the field and current research trends let last but not the least i will also discuss career path and job opportunities for people interested in making a career in so all on board let's start so what are control systems and why should one study them well control systems engineering as the name suggests is a field of engineering which undertakes essential task of design and analysis of systems for performance and stability so in a nutshell it helps one to define and tweak a system such that it achieves the required performance criteria and stays stable throughout its operating range here i would like to clarify a general myth around the topic of control systems that they are highly complex and difficult to comprehend but this is not entirely correct people believe this myth partly due to the intense mathematics and theory required to truly understand what is happening under the hood in reality degree of complexity depends on what type of system we are trying to control and what sort of control techniques we have employed and hence a control system can range from being a highly simple one to being a highly complex one having said that the control system is a very broad field and the applications range from automotive industry to biomedical industry from home appliances and power tools to space technology from train systems to marine systems food processing to defense systems assembly line automation to precision manufacturing and so on let us take some examples from the real world to better understand what i mean here let me start with very simple and very non obvious control system example so ceiling room in your bedroom is it a control system well even though it is not so obvious like most of you would have guessed it right the answer is yes now another question is it a, a complex control system or a simple control system well here the answer is it depends what it depends on is what kind of uh, what does it depend on whether a, con a control system is complex one or not well it depends on the type of actuators involved type of sensors used type of uh, features or functions expected from control system and the type of control type of system the plant which we are trying to control so moving on to a few more examples from household water heater system in your bathroom or temperature control system in your home washing machine oven dishwasher vacuum machine and many more these are all examples of control system next let us look at control system examples from space technology so spacecraft satellite rocket launch vehicles satellite attitude and orbit control system it controls orientation and position of the space vehicles it is used to control orientation of thrusters for maneuvering solar panels for power generation antennas for communication cameras for imaging and etc etc rocket propulsion control system it controls launch vehicle propulsion essentially controls thrust to be generated to help launch payloads such as satellite cargo even tesla car 
astronauts and place them in orbit or propel them into the deep space then there are temperature control systems oxygen level control systems solar power control systems waste management control system and many more these are required because we have astronauts staying in space stations landing control system this control system is used to control and have a safe landing of the spacecraft on planet surfaces the planet could be earth it could be mars or it could be a moon like our moon ground antenna position control systems for continuous communication with satellites planetary body tracking control systems used in telescopes and many more so overall space technology requires complex and very costly control systems due to the high reliability and high safety requirement now coming to train and marine control systems trains have traction control systems to produce torque which is required to drive the train on tracks then there are diesel engine control systems regenerative brake control system ac control system traffic control system and so on marine vehicles have propulsion systems to produce the required thrust to propel the marine vehicle then there are battery charging control systems diesel engine control systems submarines also have temperature oxygen and air pressure control systems because they operate below the sea levels next are biomedical applications minimally invasive surgery simulators are used for training for example laparoscopy and endoscopy simulator then there are robot assisted surgery systems such as da vinci system biomedical machines such as ecg and emg machines ventilators dialysis machines there are active prosthetic devices to cure disabilities like exoskeletal limbs there are devices for clinical training devices for diagnosis and devices for treatment coming to precision manufacturing semiconductor wafer stage control optic fabrication laser based applications and additive manufacturing then in food processing application we have plant control systems for power tools and assembly line applications there are welding and painting robots thermal imaging and many more coming to defense applications there are radar and laser guided missiles anti missile systems position tracking systems anti tank systems tank and all terrain vehicle control systems and many more now in automotive applications let us talk about adas and auto autonomous vehicles adas vehicle are essentially traditional vehicles with varying degrees of automation they offer improved safety and comfort the driver needs to be present and he takes an active part in driving the vehicle now in autonomous vehicle basically autonomous vehicles are traditional vehicles with fully automated driver functions this means that the driver is not mandatory to be present in the vehicle and machine is making decisions and carrying out actions which were previously performed by a human being and hence they have various automated control systems at their heart to carry out these decisions made by artificial intelligent and machine learning system the examples are steering control systems cruise control system braking control system transmission control system engine control system traction control systems and so on and so forth to to list a few more there are hybrid control systems automatic seat adjustment control systems power windows sunroof power foot door mirror control systems now let us talk about state of art in automotive field well the systems which are designed Uh, today they are almost all mechatronic systems and for system design they use modeling languages such as sysml then there are various kind of sensors involved such as pressure sensor temperature sensor position sensor speed torque vision radar etc in actuator we have solenoids dc motors bldc motors hydraulic pumps then there are electronic control units electronic control units have two parts one is a hardware the other is software in hardware we have analog and digital circuits microcontrollers edge based drivers and various asics in software 
well it, it depends in what kind of mod, uh, programming language is used to design the software it could be a embedded c program it could also be a model based design using matlab and simulink then there is requirement of modeling and simulation then the development happens using the famous v cycle or a v model then there is rapid control prototyping and there is validation and testing now that we know the importance of control systems in our everyday life let us dive deep into the fundamentals of the field that will act as a guiding beacon for a control systems engineer who will be working on developing solutions to this control problem from my experience the best way to understand and appreciate the theory of control systems is through hands on work and experiment so rather than taking a traditional path which is followed by textbooks i'm going to take a different path here instead of starting with techniques and then applying them to solve a problem let's start with a problem and figure out what techniques we will require to solve these problems and i will help you correlate this with existing control system techniques so let's take automated steering control system as our problem statement so the first question that comes to mind what is this steering control system and what is its application or what is its function why do we need this system in our vehicle at all steering system's main function is to give ability to steer the vehicle or change direction of the vehicle let us understand how this works in traditional vehicles where the driver steers the vehicle with the help of a steering wheel so on your uh, on the right hand side you can see a uh, a model of a steering system the component number 1 is the steering wheel component number 2 is steering column component number 3 is rack and pinion mechanism and 4 and 5 are arms so driver exerts a uh, steering force or torque on steering wheel which is then translated to rotation of steering column which results in linear motion of uh, part number 3 which is the rack and it then results into motion of arms 4 and 5 uh, generally ackerman's uh, the uh, ackerman's model is used to uh, design and uh, calibrate this link now how would one represent the system for his or her understanding the answer is using block diagram block diagrams are very useful for representing documenting and communicating a control system so let us draw a block a block diagram for our system let us start with the driver as the component of the control system he exerts torque on the steering wheel which is then converted from rotary moment to linear moment by the steering column and the rack and pinion mechanism or any equivalent mechanism this eventually rotates the front tires of the vehicle this produces forces in the lateral direction on the tire and the vehicle eventually turns this complete system is represented as a vehicle component now the driver also sees how much the vehicle has turned so let us give this feedback to the driver component driver also sees surrounding system such as objects in the vehicle's path curvature of the road let us call this environment component and let's give this inputs to the driver then there are things unknown to the driver such as road profile we will call this disturbance component now that we have pretty much covered all the components of our system let's put them together and see what we can make out of it so the driver takes input from his surroundings or the environment he also takes feedback from the vehicle and decides whether to steer or not and if he should steer in which direction he should he should steer and by how much he then exerts torque on the steering wheel which in turn steer uh, which in turn steers the vehicle and the cycle continues in control systems this is called a closed loop control system or a feedback control system since the driver uses feedback from the vehicle to correct his steering wheel torque here if the driver did not have feedback from the vehicle this will be called an open loop control system 
And since there is no way to know whether the amount of steer that actually happened was correct or not, feedback is required in our case. Now let us correlate this with control system terminology. Driver is called the controller who is controlling the system. Vehicle is called plant which needs to be controlled. Input from plant to the controller is called feedback. Unknown inputs to the vehicle are called disturbances and amount of steer is called the reference or the set point. Now imagine that you had to automate what the driver is doing in this system because that is precisely what happens in an autonomous vehicle. So we replace the driver component with ECU, electronic control unit, which is an electronic device that can be flashed with appropriate control software. Of course, there will be some more modifications required in the vehicle, such as addition of, addition of mechanism, mechanism. This will be added to the vehicle or the plant. In order to write control software, which will be a replacement of the driver, we need to first understand our vehicle or the plant which includes steering mechanisms, actuators, sensors, and vehicle dynamics. This is where physical modeling and simulation come in picture. And these are achieved by system identification techniques from control systems, such as impulse response of the system, frequency response of the system, mathematical modeling, data-based modeling of the system, and simulation. A very widely used tool uh, MATLAB and Simulink are, uh, and uh, there are some other uh, alternatives which are used for uh, this purpose. Now, once we know the system, we start to design and analyze our control system for stability and performance. Now, this is where control system design techniques such as root locus method, PID controller, lead lag, and lag lead compensators other close pole placement methods, frequency response methods, Bode plots, state space methods. Then there are state observers and estimates, estimators, et cetera, come handy. Let us summarize the essential topics of control systems that are required to fully and successfully design and analyze a control system. So we have system identification techniques, there are control system design techniques, and then there are control system analysis techniques. Let us move on to evolution of control system, past, present, and the future. So the control systems have been known to be part of human civilization since as early as third century BC. And the system that was designed in that time was a water clock. It essentially controlled water flow which was used to estimate time elapsed. And this marks as being the first control system in record. But the first automatic control system, which was used in industrial process was the famous James Watt's flyball governor, which was developed in the 18th century for controlling speed of steam engines. This marks first use for automatic control system in then came 19th century when Maxwell, uh, the famous uh, electrical engineer explained, electrical engineer and scientist, I should say, explained the theoretical basis of operation of governors using math, mathematics and physics model. This marks beginning of control theory development. Then came 20th century when classical and modern control theory was shaped and it found its application across industries. And there was exponential growth due to the growth of electronics. This marks golden era for engine and transmission control systems and automated systems for automotive applications. And for the 21st century and ahead, we see that computational neural networks, artificial intelligence, machine learning based control systems are more and more being developed and used to solve control problems. And uh, this will find applications in EDAS and autonomous vehicles. Coming to career and job opportunity, 
well control system is an ever evolving and ever green industry so if you are interested in contributing to the field and leave a mark there is actually a lot of scope for both the engineering professionals as well as for research scientists in research and development field uh, there are a lot of uh, leading institutes such as iits nits there are bit then vit and many regional universities which are providing research fellowships you can look for uh, you can look up for them on their university websites uh, also there are research positions in automotive companies like oems as well as tier 1 suppliers you can look up on company career pages uh, there are also job por portals such as nokri and linkedin now coming to engineering and applications there are engineering positions in automotive companies like control system engineer application engineer physical modeling and simulation engineer test and validation engineers system engineer and mechatronic design engineer and so on also for exploring open positions you can refer to company career websites or nokri and linkedin portal 